Welcome back to the channel guys. I'm back on my Massey Harris Model 33 tractor trying to put this thing back together. Hardest part I'm having is finding the parts for it. The parts that I am finding are rare and expensive and expensive but we're making progress. So I've got my clutch has been rebuilt. I sent it in to hold on let's figure out who it was. It was all states ag parts. I sent my clutch into all states. They rebuilt it. They also sent me a new pressure plate to replace the existing exceptionally worn one. So that's back in place. I just went ahead and tossed, used my uh, drive shaft there as the actual clutch alignment tool. I got that bolted up. We're good to go. Didn't get any footage of it because, well, I just wasn't in the video mood that day. Anyways, I also from all states got my new Massey Ferguson piston ring set. I'm excited about this because this is uh, set number three. I went with another vendor and they sent me the wrong set twice. They sent me 3.725 rings and this is a 3.625 motor. I was almost thinking about putting the rings back, putting it back. Well, I wouldn't have done that. I would not have put the rings back in as is and just run with it. And here's why. This is an old piston ring right there. That gap right there is right at about 106 thousandths, I believe. And here is the new piston ring. And let's get a measurement on that one real quick and see what it looks like. So we're right here with this new piston ring. That's 25,000, 24, excuse me, 23. Right there at 22 thousandths on my gauge. So that's still a larger gap than is than spec. But that's what we have and we're going to run with it so we're going to put this thing back together put these new piston rings on the old pistons and put it back together and it's going to be it's going to be a lot better i mean just visibly to go from that to that that gives us options i think that this motor as soon as we do this it's gonna it's just gonna flat out run so let's just, let's replace some piston rings here Hold on, double check, all right. Beautiful. Jump down, put the lower cap on, rotate it around. Now I wasn't going to do all the checks on here, right? I wasn't going to check the uh, piston uh, play in, or the ring play in the piston, but I decided to go ahead. The manual says uh, six thousandths play is the maximum you should have between the uh, ring and the piston groove. So I got my six thousandths shim here or feeler gauge. Pressing down, that slides in, barely slides in. I can feel it dragging in there pretty good. And that's fairly loose. Now, the manual says if you're at six thousandths or more, you either need new pistons. Let's try that again. There's seven thousandths. Seven thousandths. Still right at seven. So once again, the manual says at six thousandths or more, you're supposed to replace the pistons or you're supposed to take and have them machined with a steel insert. We're so close. We're at about eight thousandths. Once again, this is uh, kind of like a toddler rebuild, right? Where you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. We're going to run this however it is. But I am doing this just to get an understanding of what kind of, what we will have, what I'll expect out of this motor. Eight thousandths. I'm going to call that 
between seven and eight thousandths clearance on all of my piston rings. That's right on the upper edge of spec. Look at it this way when we're talking about these specs. It's on an engine rebuild. And so you want to put it back in and you want to get, say, if it was an old car, another 50, 100,000 miles out of it. Back in the day, these were built. I'm not going to get the equivalent of that mileage out of this tractor over the years that I run it. It's just not going to happen. I'm going to run this tractor, you know, what, 30 hours a year? Maybe more, maybe 100 hours a year. There's no way I'm going to put this tractor through the paces that it's necessary to rebuild it to uh, back to factory specifications. So I'm going to get it as close as I can without having to sink a whole ton of money into something that's that's obsolete and just prohibitively expensive to rebuild. So I'm happy with six eight thousandths. I know we're out of spec. I think it's just going to still run. I'm going to, I'll bet you I'll have good compression in the 120 range. Yeah, well, we'll find that out. And so we're just going to go ahead and keep on putting this sucker back together. Toss in my last set of rod bearings. Add some engine assembly lube and drop it into place. Now when you drop these into place, of course they have an orientation. And uh, the book will tell you, read your manual. My manual says that we have a stamped number of your piston or your cylinder number right there. And that goes on. I guess on a car that would be your driver's side. So the left hand side of the tractor. So the cast number right here goes on the left hand side of the tractor. It will drop down into the bore right there. head gasket showed up had to have these custom made the guys over at Olson's gaskets I gave them a call they built these for me had a piece of plywood in the shipping container to keep it from getting bent or damaged in transit which I was grateful to see always well makes you nervous when you order something like a head gasket <clears throat> but here we go brand new head gasket Four cylinder, how well does it match up? 
here we go. Line it all up. Looks pretty good to me. I see holes everywhere that there is an existing hole. I don't see any extra holes. Oh yeah, have a couple of barn cats doing barn cat stuff. Some orphan kittens that showed up over the this spring, so. They're still there. What are you doing? What are you gonna do down there? Okay, you work. Make it, fix it really good, okay? Okay. All right. She, she's going to fix it. All right. I am going to use some, uh, some Permatex Super 300 for the head gasket. I've read and heard on the interwebs that it's a stuff to use, so that's what I'm going to try. All right, this is a big moment for me. I'm awfully excited about this. Putting the head back on in such a fashion that I don't destroy and get everything out of whack. Okay, now let me get my head gasket resituated here because it's not in a happy spot. And grab some head bolts. You torque this thing down to do 100, 110 foot pounds. Uh, wait, on model 33, 130 to 140. Yeah, 100, 110 foot pounds. All right, 75 to 95 to, to 105. Alright, so we're at top dead center on cylinder number one, and both valves are completely closed. You see I've got a lot of lash in here. I didn't keep track of which, uh, which rod was, was where. I wasn't too worried about it because they are all adjustable. So this one here has got a lot of adjustment to do. In fact, that rod, I'll be replacing it eventually. It's uh, not exactly square anymore. But you guys know this procedure, right? So you just... Oh my goodness, break free the lock nut. And I'll do this. Break free the lock jam nut there. And then my procedure is I just tighten this down. There we go until, until we can't spin it freely anymore. So that's tight. That spins, there we go, right there. Keep that right in place. My boy went down hard. Tighten up the jam nut, double check. I'm happy with that. This one, not so much. This one, we're good. Jam nut loose. All right, we are now taking up all that slop. Doesn't want to spin. Loosen it up just a maybe. What is that? Eighth of a turn or so. It's coming back together, guys. I've got spare parts and hardware. I don't know where those three bolts go off the top of my head, but we'll figure that out. But we've got a new clutch, pressure plate, release bearing, throw out bearing, whatever you want to call it. It's like we got some adjustment, extra adjustment in that clutch we need to take up. 
we've got the head on after my after I reconditioned the uh, valve seats in there holding the cylinders new piston rings had the crank ground and straightened new uh, rod and main bearings new rear or yeah new front and rear main seal new head gasket the water pump is actually much newer I put that water pump on well five or ten years ago right there so that's fairly new next step is to rebuild that starter convert it to a 12 volt starter because it's a six volt right now so that thing just boy it just spins fast and which is great to start up a tractor especially when it's cold but it's horrible on your flywheel right getting that and the bendex getting that bendex to just smash into that flywheel at double the speed that it's intended to so i've got a rebuild kit for the starter that's a, a 12 volt conversion i'll be throwing that on there bits and pieces at a time i hope you guys are enjoying this i am and uh, i'm learning a lot every time i come out here i'm doing something that i've never done before so thanks for watching i'll catch you guys on the next video we'll be starting this thing up soon catch you on the next one oh hey go outside go to your shop go to your barn go do something you've never done before what's the worst that can happen thanks for watching